our final video here in chapter two is actually a fairly short one. Uh, this is what are the new features in SQL Server 2008 analysis services. This is a short video because there aren't that many uh, to really discuss. So let's just get started here. Uh, let me just go ahead and say if you did not use SQL Server 2005 analysis services, go ahead and skip this video. No need to watch this. Go on to either Chapter 3, which is in the System Administrators track, or to Chapter 4, which is for business analysts uh, and for or the BI analysts uh, and the BI uh, users and architects. Okay. So this is really, this particular video is for those of you who have used SQL Server 2005, want to know what the new features are in SQL Server 2008 analysis services. Now don't forget that we actually are dealing with two versions in this course, both SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008 R2. The good news is there are no new features for R2. So SQL Server 2008 Analysis Services and SQL Server 2008 R2 Analysis Services are identical. Okay? They have the exact same features. There's nothing that's changed between them. So what we want to talk about in this video is what's new in between SQL Server 2005 and the various SQL Server 2008 editions. Okay. Now, the move from SQL Server 2000 Analysis Services to SQL Server 2005 Analysis Services was a massive shift. It was a major change. Probably out of all of the components, the only comparable one would be in Integration Services. Like the move from DTS to SQL Server Integration Services was bigger, but this is pretty massive. This is on that same type of scale. Now as we move though from the major change in SSAS 2005 to SSAS 2008, it's kind of a little bitty minor change. Like it's an earth shattering move to go from SQL Server 2000 to SQL Server 2005 with regard to analysis services. It's, hey that's kind of cool, just to go from 2005 to 2008. It's not a big deal at all. Right? There's just a couple of new things here and there. And generally speaking, the new things are, oh, well, that makes sense, or good, glad they did that. Right? Nothing major, uh, no major changes. Uh, one of the things, we've got a new version of the Management Studio. Uh, we also are working in Visual Studio 2008 instead of 2005. Uh, we have the Report Builder 2.0. Uh, or if you're on R2 and you're working with reporting services, you have Report Builder 3.0. Okay. Oops, sorry. Now for the system admins, now we have the ability to actually query the server. So we can actually write queries inside of our MDX query tool, and just like we can in the database engine, we can find out all sorts of metadata about the server, about the connections, um, how many unique members does a dimension have, uh, for example. We can write queries to get that information back. And we can do that with what are called the data management views, the DMVs here. Right? Uh, you can actually do attach and detach of databases now uh, inside of analysis services. You know, that's kind of one of those, oh, cool, I like that. Now I can just kind of transfer my databases from one instance to another, or from one server to another pretty easily. Uh, another thing, we have the idea with, of a read-only database with scale-out deployment. Okay? So no longer are we tied to just one single machine now. Okay? We can have multiple analysis services servers serving the same database. This is sort of your uh, load balancing for analysis services. Right? And that's really what you would do. You would put some sort of an NLB, a network load balancer, and as the requests come into that, it then routes that request to your analysis services server. And they're all just reading the database, the same database from a, a SAN somewhere. There's a link down here if you want to learn a little bit more about that. It's kind of out of the scope of this course. We'll talk a little bit about scale out a little more in Chapter 3. Won't do it, but I'll kind of talk about it a little more. But that's a good link for you right there. 
Uh, also, uh, a major, major change for those of us dealing with backups of analysis services. Your backups are very fast compared to what they were in SQL 2005 for your large multidimensional databases. Uh, if you were working in 2005, you had, there were known issues with regards to the speed. Like it was a, uh, a bell curve, if you will. Like your backups were normal until your database got to this size. And once it reached a certain size, then your backups just started going so slowly. But in 2008, this is very, very fast, okay, relatively speaking. At about the same, however long it would take you to do file copy with that database size, that's about how long it would take to do a backup of that size. So I, I thought that was the best analogy. Now for those of you doing the, uh, on the BI Architect track, uh, we have the idea of block computation today in SQL Server 2008 Analysis Services. What this allows us to do is get our aggregations faster. So analysis services, when we're processing our cubes, when we're uh, retrieving the data, if we're asking for information, try to think of how to visually explain this here, it basically means we can skip unnecessary aggregations. Just answer the question I'm asking you. Don't go try to answer 50 other questions and make me wait four hours for the response. Just go answer the question I'm asking you. Okay? It basically allows us to ignore uh, unasked for aggregations in a question. Uh, we have a new cube designer. Uh, everything is just a little cleaner, I think, in 2008. Uh, a, a little more user friendly, if you will. A lot of folks, myself included, thought the move from SQL Server 2000 to 2005 was done by a team of developers because there was nothing friendly about it. It was all written by developers for developers. Kind of a little more polished now in the 2008 versions of the tools. Uh, another nice feature that you're going to dig is when you are doing things you shouldn't be doing uh, or going against best practices, industry practices, you're going to get alerts and warnings show up in Visual Studio when you do that. And some of them will also suggest what you should be doing uh, instead of what you've done. Okay. Uh, there's a new cube design wizard, new dimension design wizard. Um, not None of these are major, major things, are they? Hey, there's a new wizard. Hey, you got a new screen for doing this. Okay. Uh, you can now write back to your cube uh, in MOLAP, and we'll talk about MOLAP, multidimensional OLAP, or relational OLAP, which is ROLAP, or hybrid OLAP, which is HOLAP. Uh, we'll deal with those a little bit later. Uh, data mining, uh, there's a couple of new features in data mining, but really not that many here. You have what's called a holdout test set. Uh, this allows us to do our training for the data mining uh, and a test set for the data mining as separate things. Uh, for just your regular users, this is outside of the scope, I guess, but this is under the you know, idea of who, what you use to browse the cube. Excel 2010 has a lot more BI features. They're really trying to entrench Excel even more so as the main business go-to front-end tool. Okay? So you're going to have spark lines and cool reports. It can work with your cubes. It can work with data mining. Okay? Uh, there's also this new tool called Power Pivot, which is an add-in to Excel. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's just so easy to create dashboards. It's a very, very cool tool. We're going to talk about working with that in, I want to say it's Chapter 7 or Chapter 8. Uh, you can even do it with SharePoint 2010. As well. Yep, chapter eight. Look at there. There you go. Okay. But that's it. I'll see you in whatever your next chapter is. Chapter three is for the sysadmins. That's on installing analysis services. Chapter four is for the BI architects and possibly the users. And that's on designing databases and dimensions and measures.